I'm going to show you a little bit of uh, what I've been working on uh, during the last year from, uh, while I was doing development for Blender. And uh, let's go. So there are a few categories uh, I've mostly worked on, which is the paint systems, the viewport project, which is uh, a little bit of a recent uh, 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 under the, um, we undertook the uh, project pretty recently, but it's been brewing for some years, actually. We have the, some things on the user interface, which have been included in past releases, the Pi menus, uh, and the widget project, which I'm going to talk about um, also. And a little bit on video sequence editing, which was mostly for the needs of the Gooseberry uh, project. And um, we're going to also talk a little bit about the plans for than for the next years. So, uh, for um, the tools that uh, have been made uh, this year for paint systems include better masking, lasso bo and box masking. We have uh, full speed mat matcaps as opposed to earlier versions of Blender. Uh, we have uh, done a number of, of optimizations uh, on the speed of sculpting uh, with Campbell Barton, who is, must be somewhere around here. And uh, we've, improved, uh, we've improved the twist tool. Uh, we've also added the gravity tool, for, uh, which is uh, uh, a development by Jason Wilkins. And we've added the vertex color uh, baking to textures. And we also have, uh, for the 272B uh, release, we have the Google Summer of Code 2013 branch, which is mostly texture painting uh, related. But uh, uh, there are also features that are uh, relevant to sculpting and uh, vertex painting and uh, everything, really. So we have curves, palettes, gradients, masks, uh, and uh, the most uh, important feature, I think, is uh, the slot uh, functionality, which is similar to uh, uh, layers, but not exactly like uh, layers. We have blend mode support for uh, the brush system, uh, which is more like a GIMP. We have anchored and uh, drag, uh, drag the strokes, uh, a unified color system, and, uh, and a hue, saturation, and lightness color wheel. And uh, all these have been emerging master. Perhaps I should make a demonstration later about how it used to be and uh, what, we, uh, what we managed to do for uh, 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 the, late, the latest release, how it works, and how much better I think it is. So maybe give me a minute. So I'm going to open up uh, an old version of Blender. Come on. Okay. So this is Blender. Uh, give me a minute. Blender 2.69. So. Um, right. So the workflow in Blender 6, uh, 269 is that you have to go to edit mode and unwrap your mesh real quickly. Mm. Just sorry. All right. So we have to unwrap it. We have to go to the texture paint editor to the image editor, sorry, here. You have to add a new image and sign it to the UVs and then go to texture painting mode and now we can paint. And uh, I guess you can imagine that uh, uh, this could be a little bit uh, troublesome and uh, new users, uh, when confronted with these uh, uh, many steps, usually uh, did not know, you know what to do. Some people skipped steps. If you want to change uh, the image, it was pretty hard. So the, the way it works in Blender in recent master is like just a minute. Right, so this is Blender 272. Sorry. 
and the steps are is you open a pie menu, you select texture painting, and here you you have a warning which says you have to add this uh, UVs and the texture paint slot. So you basically just add a UV layer and the diffuse color, which is assigned to the material itself. So if we go up here and we select the material and the texture slots, you can see that you have a diffuse color added and you can go in, in texture painting and paint immediately. So yeah, this is not the best example, of course, it's very simplified, but if you have a, a quite complex model with um, uh, textures which use UVs, you can immediately get a list of them by, uh, by going to the slot tab and seeing the list of uh, your images here. And uh, I, I think what I personally like best about the system is that you can quite easily uh, just add a um, normal slot like that and go to material mode and paint bump maps, which was pretty hard to set up uh, in, the, in the old days. Anyway, so pretty quick, that's the, the highlights for uh, texture painting. Some people uh, liked it, some people liked the old workflow. Uh, I might be interested to know if people used it and uh, what they think of it. And if you think it's, uh, it could be improved somewhat, we had a few issues right before release where some people complained that they didn't really like the system. So I'm always open to feedback, uh, uh, so just hit me. And so back to the presentation. For the future, uh, we want to, I'd like, I'd personally like to reuse the PBVH for vertex painting, which would make it uh, fast and uh, uh, actually work correctly. Uh, I don't know how many people of you have tried using vertex painting, but if you really zoom out and try to paint on the system, then, uh, and you zoom back in, then you get some blanks, and, uh, which, because it basically uh, depends on uh, the viewport itself to detect what faces to paint on. And uh, the correct thing to do it is, is, of course, to do it computationally and uh, reuse the, the same uh, acceleration structure that sculpting uses, which will allow us to basically sculpt on, uh, paint on uh, the mesh directly and correctly. We had an old PTEX branch by Nicholas Bishop, which uh, is somewhere in the cyberspace. We would must, uh, we will probably would have to look at it. We have a great patch by Fabio Russo, who has uh, coded layer support uh, like Photoshop in the 2D image editor, uh, which is a huge patch. Uh, I'm not sure if we can, uh, we can uh, properly look and integrate it soon enough because of, uh, of the size of it, but it would be really nice to have. We have to fix multi-res modifier, and be any people who are sculpting here, I'm, I'm sure, uh, will have uh, experienced the awesomeness uh, quoted awesomeness of the multi-res modifier. And maybe um, yeah, I'd like to look into GPU texture painting for the future. All right. And let's talk a little bit about the viewport project. So uh, we've written a blog post about uh, the viewport project in Blender. Basically, uh, we want to improve the performance of, uh, of the viewport and uh, support uh, uh, full screen effects, compositing, and uh, of course materials, uh, yeah, node-based materials, PBR, and stuff like that. So we have uh, two main branches, one uh, with by Jason Wilkins, and I've started a few experiments myself, still early in development. Uh, first targets are going to be uh, uh, compositing mainly, mainly and uh, performance, and uh, we are go we wanted to also uh, take this opportunity to explore uh, um, uh, support for embedded devices like uh, cell phones and tablets, which is um, which is uh, reliant on the uh, OpenGL version, uh, which is uh, different than what we use in the desktop. And uh, this, this is going to take a while because it's a technical target that's really uh, uh, complex and uh, we will have to change our base co uh, code base quite a lot. Hmm. So um, 
we are going to uh, we're going to have to um, uh, change our OpenGL requirements to 2.1 probably for uh, if we want to support this because we, we need uh, shaders shaders for everything and uh, we are also looking into uh, different rendering perhaps and there is a blog post where you can check out the the, uh, the, the targets of the project. But I'd like to show you a little bit of what we have already. So I'm going to open up my viewport branch. Right. Okay. So this is um, <clears throat> This is a build of, um, of uh, the work I've, I've been doing on my personal branch. No, it's not uh, by Jason Wilkins. Um, and I'm going to use, um, sorry, um, single server, okay. All right, so basically uh, one thing I wanted to first check out is uh, a screen space sample and occlusion technique, which, is, uh, which would help sculptors to see better what they're working on. And here I'm going to use a, a known project file, which I'm going to mutilate. Okay, so this is how the default effects looks like, and we have some settings here. Basically, you can enable some effects here. Uh, I'm working on depth of field these days, but still it's not working as it should, so it's disabled. Okay, so basically you can define the, you can define the radius in world space, and you get a darkening effect, which you can control. By this, by this slider. It's ba basically a ray tracing effect. It's not very apparent in this projector, but uh, there is some noise which we can uh, control by adjusting the quality settings here. And uh, of course, it's real time, so if I scout on this, I can get uh, the effect I want. And uh, you can also control the color of the the effect, so you can get something like, I don't know, a metallic neon light thing, if you want to. So, <laughs> so what else? I've got another scene as well to show with ambient occlusion, sorry. Mm, something is wrong. Yeah, if, sorry. Mm, right. So this is a pretty simple scene with a screen space ambient occlusion. Uh, this is without screen space ambient occlusion, so you can definitely see uh, that you cannot really see what's going on. But if, with screen space ambient occlusion, with with with, uh, with an orthographic camera, if you enable it, you can see the details of the scene. And it, uh, it's not a real ambient occlusion effect, but it helps, I guess, to if you want to show something that is in your viewport. It works for edit mode. It works for matcaps. So, yeah, they're not. They're, these are not really important effects in that they do not really enable artists to do better stuff. So, uh, you, you might argue that it's not really important. But uh, still, they're they're somewhat uh, they say make the the experience somewhat more pleasant, I, I, I guess. <clears throat> so let's go on. Right now, my my favorite subjects it's the user interface. Okay. So there are, there are two things uh, that I've worked on this uh, year. Uh, the first is the Pi Menus in the widget project. For the Pi Menus, I'd like to thank uh, Liquid Ape, as uh, Olson, uh, I, don't know, uh, I forget his name right now. Son Olson, yes. He was very helpful uh, during the development. So basically, Pi Menus are uh, uh, already committed in master. Uh, the initial plan was to support one level of Pi menus, and uh, we're slowly working on multiple levels of Pi menus. Like uh, I'm going to demo it in a while. We still have missing support for custom positions, which is if you have a Pi menu, you cannot. Uh, if you, you actually, you still have to script your Pi menus. I'm going to show you in a while how the, a little bit of how this is done. 
And uh, it would be nice to be able to script like I want my menu item to be in at northeast, etc. So this is not yet supported. And we still do not have uh, sticky keys, which is something people uh, requested. And uh, initially we had a semi-working solution for that, but it wasn't really optimal. But we have a developer here, uh, Julian uh, Isel, who, is, uh, who has provided a patch, and we're, going to, we're probably going to review it and include it for 273. Basically, it allows you to click uh, a key and get uh, an old behavior. For example, if you're in edit mode, if you want to toggle between edit mode and object mode, you can tap the tab, tab key and get in and out. But if you press the key and hold it, then you get a pie menu. So people who want to use the old key maps can do, can do so. And uh, they can also use the pie menus as they want. So um, pie authoring is mostly left to add on authors now. That was a little bit of a difficult decision. Actually, there was a bit of an uproar uh, because of that. But I think it's the correct decision. Because there was, we had a discussion about what to include in Blender, and there was so many different opinions that basically it didn't make any sense. So I'm not sure how many of you know what pie menus are, but basically they are. Sorry. Okay. So this is a build of Master of Blender 272 again. So this is a pie menu. So it allows you to quickly select a mode, and get into it, and you can select uh, a, a shaded mode for the viewport really quickly. So uh, the thing here is of always uh, to be quick about uh, what you want to do. And you can even uh, select the view, left, right, etc., bottom. So even f with people with la for people with laptops uh, this is who miss the numerical keys, this is pretty uh, uh, useful, I guess. And uh, for the 2.73 release, we're, we're going to include the sticky keys uh, that we've talked about, which I cannot show right now. And we also support uh, a nested menu. So I can just click here and get a second level of pie menu with more options. So, and we also have an, an interesting new option here, which allows you to very quickly swap between menus. So you can zigzag, for instance. As soon as you pass the threshold, you can do something like that. So if you know the, how the pie menus are, uh, uh, how, how the layout of the pie menus is, you can pretty much uh, navigate through them and uh, uh, select an option really quickly. So let me resume my presentation. Oh. Oops. <laughs> right. So we have the widget project, which is a big project. I initially wanted to, you, to do a quick demo, but uh, maybe it's not the time yet for it. Basically, the, the widget project is uh, an idea by tone, and uh, we wanted to allow uh, um, actually plugin authors and uh, uh, Blender developers to easily uh, use uh, widgets in the 3D viewport to tweak properties of their operators and uh, actually over their scene. Uh, so basically, say you might want to uh, tweak uh, the, the color of, a, not the color maybe, but the distance of a lamp. Uh, you could just drag a little widget in the 3D viewport and it would be get adjusted. It, in, as opposed to looking it up in some menu and uh, you know uh, tweaking some property, you would get the interaction in 3D uh, viewport immediately. So the design is uh, to uh, be able to easily add through a C and Python API, so uh, people who uh, also code add-ons should be able to use them. And uh, you could use them to control operators or even control properties that are in leather, like uh, a lamp's uh, uh, spotlight or whatever. And we also uh, plan to make them work on, on animation. So you could uh, basically uh, define a part of the mesh to act as a widget, and you could tweak it, and uh, then you get an operator fired up, or uh, you get an animation uh, keyframe uh, operated on. So it's uh, unfortunately we can't. I can't really show you something right now because it would have been great, but it's not working as we would like to yet. 
and it communicates with the Overton through the event system. This is pretty technical. I don't think it's much of much interest, interesting. Okay, target formation to us as act as switch as well. Okay, and we also have the sequencer. We tried to improve the sequencer for the Gooseberry uh, project uh, because basically there are some issues. Uh, which uh, mostly have to do with synchronization and uh, undo and audio. Uh, I've done some work a little bit on, uh, on this uh, problem. There are still lots of things to do. For 2.73, we're going to include a trim tool. Actually, yesterday it was renamed to slide tool. I'm going to show you in a while what this does. And uh, we still need to make the system much more uh, uh, stable, I guess. But I'm going to show you a little bit of the sequencer branch. This is the end of the presentation. Actually, after this demo, uh, we are through. And I'm open to questions, but I'm going to show you a little bit about what the improvements are. So I'm going to open up a, a movie file here. And this is Cloud Atlas. I don't know if you've seen it. So, ah, sorry, I have to mount my, uh, my disk first. All right, so let me refresh that. All right, so if you want to see the, uh, the undo issues I've been talking about, we, we, you really have to enable, sorry. Yep, okay. So we have a preview here, we have the movie. And we're starting to uh, look at it. And I also want, sorry, it's a bit awkward to work like this. Okay, so say we want to draw the waveform on this strip, which is the audio of the strip. So I'm waiting, I'm going to get a coffee. I'm waiting some more, right? I'm waiting some more, more, more. And finally, I hope <laughs> we're going to get our, our waveform. <clears throat> I think I didn't. No, I did. I did. <laughs> yeah. So uh, anyway, as you can see, this is pretty much unworkable. Okay. So uh, yeah, I took the, the, the second click. Now the, the interesting thing is that if I try to move this and I and, and undo, ah, uh, it works. Okay. I, maybe I should uh, replick that. Anyway. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. But uh, the point is, if uh, you undo and uh, you try to, uh, if you have draw waveforms on and you try to undo after an operation, it still takes the same time to uh, basically do, the, uh, do this thing. And I'm pretty much, I think I will have to kill Blender so that you won't wait forever. Oh, it is? Thank you. Thank you, Blender. All right. Okay, maybe I will not undo, just, I think you got the message. But I'm going to open the, um, the new branch so you can see how it works now. That was master. That was master, yes. So it turns out that since people are working on uh, video editing a, a lot, we, I, we were requested for uh, the Gooseberry project to also use a, an option to turn on all waveforms on and off. So you, you do it through here. And now Blender uses um, a work, basically, which is a threaded thing. You, uh, and the interface is responsible. You can do stuff like that. OK, my strip disappeared, I don't know. But you can undo, and you still get a fast undo. I didn't try this on the old branch, but I advise you to not do it. And uh, we have the, um, uh, the trim tool, which is actually uh, the slip tool. Basically what it does it is that it allows you to take the contents of the movie inside the strip or a sound and uh, transform it uh, without uh, uh, changing the in and out points of the strip. And also what, uh, what the director of Gooseberry requested was the ability to have a backdrop, just like the sequencer, so you, I can click that and I have the movie right in the back, so yeah. Okay, and now if I trim, I'm trimming the contents, sliding, sorry. Uh, you can see the result of the background. 
So that's all. That's the important things about the sequencer. We're still working on it because there are some issues with sound still that we're trying to resolve, but basically we're trying to make it more stable and usable. And I hope you get to see the results soon. So... Um, I think we have five minutes for questions. Questions. No? You're first. <laughs> what kind of impact does the uh, AO have on the viewport performance when sculpting? Uh, excuse me, the, the ah, ambient occlusion thing? Yeah. Well, it, it depends on the quality settings. I'm try, I was trying to uh, make it uh, as, um, as optimized as possible. It's not that uh, much. Uh, the good thing is that it's bound by your resolution, so it doesn't really depend on your vertex count. It's always bound by your screen resolution. But I um, still wanted to improve, want to improve that, and, and you know. But it's not much. It's interactive. You can sculpt. I think you've tried it. Uh, no, I've only seen it. Okay, okay. It looks great. Yeah, it works. It works. So it's possible to. to. Uh, I want to really appreciate your work on the user interface. Uh, yep. And I wanted to Thank ask you. with the Pi menus because I started to using them immediately uh, and really love the work you did. Mm -hmm. But if there is some intent uh, and uh, rather in the whole Blender Institute or like to switch uh, to this as a default system or at least to do it <laughs> like uh, that all the menus are like this. Because now like, mm -hmm. it's an improvement, it's a huge improvement. But at the same time, now there are two systems of menus. So is there an intent to integrate this, like make it consistent? Well, uh, the thing as Tom said at the beginning is that the thing is to allow users to switch their defaults easily. And uh, mm -hmm. I don't think, uh, I think, you know, having this sort of uh, discussions about the defaults, it's a little, it's a little bit um, pointless because each person has its own, his own uh, or her own workflow. So, I guess what we really need to, to work on is how to make how to make it easier for people to do this sort of uh, customization. And currently, it's not so easy. I must admit because you have to script the Pi menus, or you have to rely on the official uh, Pi add-on that we shipped with uh, 2.72. But uh, I, I guess for for the first version, it's not that bad. We wanted we also wanted to see how people would use uh, the Pi's themselves. So you know what workflows what workflows would be uh, most common. And uh, I, I guess we still have to explore that. Um, I, but uh, having something as default, um, I guess if we accept the sticky key functionality, uh, we could uh, have some pies by default because they, there would not be there would be no conflict with uh, the current key map, so people who are used to it can you know uh, keep using it. Mm -hmm. But uh, about what the default pies could, will be and what uh, you know uh, they're going to do, I guess uh, you, you can't please everyone. I mean, uh, when I was first developing the uh, the pies, uh, there were so many different opinions, and uh, it was just impossible to please everyone. So uh, I hope that answers it. Even though, I guess, so we will see. Uh, there is also a Keymap project where we have to, we want to re, uh, maybe uh, re-explore how our Keymap works, and maybe this is a chance to see what functionality we have and how to integrate it better. So, okay, first uh, congratulations. It, it looks uh, excellent. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, I think this uh, tweaks to to the workflow make a, a big difference in how you work with Blender. Uh, so, thank you for that. Um, I was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, since you mentioned work on the waveform thing, yeah, um, waveforms are the, one of the most important things that mm -hmm. you need when you do lip sync animation. Mm -hmm. so yes, maybe uh, I'm not sure if you could like uh, um, fix it so that the uh, timeline uh, tool mm -hmm. can display some kind of um, how is it called? Preview, maybe something like that. Yeah, like the waveform, but um, 
taking into account all the sound files like the, how's that oh it's like a mix down of uh, yeah, the whole the, thing uh, yeah oh. it's a mix is, is it that possible or is it i'm not sure if that's really uh, necessary i mean yeah. for lip sync basically yeah, you have to uh, mix one sound for one character usually i'm, I'm not sure i will have to uh, uh, yeah. do we have to do a bit of research about how people could use it i guess it might be possible Though I think the audio API does not still allow it, of course we can always try to code it. And um, there were, uh, actually, Hjalti, uh, one of the artists for Gooseberry, requested the ability to have a um, sort of uh, window which only displays uh, the, um, uh, the the movie or audio clip that you click on, uh -huh. so that that would is allow you to uh, you know easily see the data better. I, I'm not sure if that's the solution. I guess we just need uh, some better feedback for that. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Now the next speaker. Yeah. The next who is The next speaker is Andrew Peel. So, thank you. Thank you. In, in this in this part. 